I want to welcome everybody here this morning. We got a great cast here. Brian Gray, thank you for making this possible. Brian right here. Russell, you stand up. Russell wrote the script. It's a great script. It's written by Russell Gerwitz and first time screenwriter. When I first read the screenplay, what impressed me was that he was taking a basic staple genre of the heist film, but updating it. But at the same time, not trying to act like this is the first time it's being done. So you could tell there was homages to Dog the Afternoon, you know, stuff like that. I don't need your fucking status report, sir, Pico. You saw Dog Day Afternoon, you're stolen. I think we have a, a great cast. So we can just go around the room and just say your, your real name and the role that you're playing. We'll start with the D. Denzel, playing Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> Jody Foster, Madeline White. I'd always wanted to work with Spike Lee, and we've come very close. So Spike and I have kind of danced together for a long time. We had a meeting, you know, very early on, was really to see if, if he could work with me and I could work with him. I said, look, I don't want to get in a fight with you, because you're too tough. And he said, I promise you we won't fight. And literally, we didn't. You know, Brian Grazier is clout, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a while since I had the, the clout of the studio working for me. And it's a good feeling, you know, because I'm telling you, there were some times when, like, the day before the movie opens, people walk me up the street, so when's the next movie coming out? The day before the movie's opening. So it's been a while, so when's the next movie coming out? I'm like, yo, it's coming out tomorrow. I didn't know. And I just love the marketing of a movie because that is also turning uh, ether into a solid. And it's trying to understand what are those ideas that are supposed to enter the ozone first? And I am um, very interested in the granulation of our cultural zeitgeist and how it works. Christopher Plummer, Arthur Case. Show us how edgy and full film Mitchell. Some of you guys are reading extra roles, so everybody knows who they're reading. I told you my name, that's the who. The where could most readily be described as a prison cell, but there's a vast difference between being stuck in a tiny cell and being in prison, and I am not in prison. The what is easy. Recently, I planned and set in motion events to execute the perfect bank robbery. When I read a script, sometimes names and faces will pop out automatically who could play these parts. You have your hopeless, your wish list. I just was in the midst of uh, working on uh, Julius Caesar on Broadway, Shakespeare, which is a lot of language. And uh, so I thought that that would be good, that was good preparation for this, because this is a lot of language. There's a lot of, a lot of chatter, especially my character. He does a lot, of, a lot of talking. Maybe you can clear up the matter of the safe deposit box 392 for me. See, I went over to the bank safe deposit record. First glance, it all seemed fine, but it turns out there's one box with no record at all. I mean, going all the way back to 1948, so I'm thinking... Who would have the answer to this riddle? Probably the man who forgot to mention that he built the bank in the first place in 1948. It doesn't add up, Mr. Case. It does not add up. It's something really bad, isn't it? Dennis is a very strong actor. So we needed someone, to be honest, that was not going to be scared of Denzel. Because if somebody went in there, you know, weak, would have hurt the film. Because Denzel would just run all over him. Let's cut the crap. First, okay, no plain big deal. Second, you don't order an assault when no hostages have been killed and there's no immediate threat. Third, if it ends that way, whatever happens, you don't get to be the hero. You want to bullshit me, try harder. Let's go. It's very unusual playing a character where you cover yourself up so much because for a large part of the movie, people can't see who it is. It, that's part of the story. So to play whole scenes where you're masked, you've got sunglasses on, you're hooded, it's very, very weird because a lot of acting is often through intent and intent is often shown through the eyes and what it is and how you do that. And to suddenly have all that taken away and to have this big barrier there was very sort of disarming for a little while. And it's also disarming for the people you're working with. Denzel said to me, you know, it's weird because you can't get in there to bounce off the other guy because you're acting just to this. That's the conceit of the movie. That's the deal going in. But it did take some getting used to. If you give up now, I can ensure that you'll serve the minimum. I'm thinking three years, four years at the most. You can arrange that. Well, you haven't hurt anyone or stolen anything, so 
Yes, as a matter of fact, I can. It's not good enough. Well, I wasn't finished. When you get out, you'll have two million dollars. We will. How so? Well, we'll go get it, and we'll put it in a safe deposit box, and it'll be there waiting for you when you get out. Jodie Foster is the fixer. People like her character. They're not advertised. You're not going to see their commercial on television, on the radio, or, or see them listed in the yellow pages. But if you're in an upper echelon, breathing that rarefied air where she resides, if you need something done and you have enough money, that is the person to call. I like that she knows all of the elements of the mystery in some ways, that she's been through it before a hundred times. And, um, that no seeming emergency is really that urgent, that all will be worked out in the end. Um, and that there's a kind of um, relaxed quality, a, a witty quality to her. The contents of that box are of great value to me, so long as they remain my secret. And if they're exposed? I'll face some difficult questions. So it stays locked or it disappears? Precisely. I have to say, I can't help but be skeptical. Whoever gave you my number got the same deal. Clearly, he was satisfied. Cut! Take even a little bigger pause. A bigger one? Yeah, a bigger one. And just look out. Oh, I'll look over. Huh? I'll, I'll go away and come back. Yeah, right. go, go to New Jersey, go to Hoboken. <laughs> he made life very easy for me because all of these stars respect him. So therefore, I didn't, as a producer, have any stress. You mean beyond the obvious? That's what I mean. Come on, this ain't no bank robbery. This is your fault. I told you to get the buses. Fuck you! I didn't kill anybody. I got 50 more people in here. You fuck with me again, I'll give you two of the longest days of your life. He does a very unusual thing, which I've never come across before, which I imagine is um, a, a DP's nightmare, is that he shoots both ways at the same time. If you're an actor and you're in a group scene, and you're doing everything with one camera. If you're the last person that shoots, by the end of the day, your performance is gone because you delivered it off screen while they're getting, if getting everybody else. He's a very sophisticated filmmaker and, and, and the shot selection. I, I have an appreciation much more now for his abilities of having tried to put a film together myself. I now know what it takes and, and the amount of hard work so in fact I was able to sit in a couple of sessions with he and his DP and, and to, to, to see how they operate even even in pre-production and you know their preparation and he's very thorough and he he doesn't come to the set scratching his chin trying to figure things out he's ready to go We visited uh, quite a few detectives, and we have one, Neil, who's been on the set with us the whole time, and uh, talked about, you know, hostage negotiations. And we got a guy named Egg Bladonovich, who came from ESU, so those two guys were by our side. Ed and Neil's input was invaluable throughout. There's just the way cops do stuff. There's a language, there's a body language, I mean, you know, the way you hold your gun, or just little things, they spike. And, you know, we would convey that on, and the actors relied on these guys, too, so it was very helpful. Spike Lee did a great job in, in balancing not only the tension that existed in the script, but all of these great actors. If you surround yourself with talented people, of course, there's no guarantees. Because things, things still could go wrong. But you have a better chance of achieving what you want if you surround yourself with talented people in front of and behind the camera. Cut, 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 cut. Check the gate. Checking the gates. August 16th, the year of Lord, 2005, we just finished number four. Number four together. 
Inside Man. That's right. He got game. Malcolm X and star with Mo Better. Mo be the Mo Better makes the Mo <laughs> Better. <laughs> better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would just like to say, and there's no BS. I mean, it's been a pleasure, you know, for us, really. For me. And I'm really proud of the four films we've done. Right, me too. And, and the work, you know. We're getting old, Spike. Uh, we're getting old. <laughs> we're getting old. But the thing I want to say is that every day, Malcolm X just grows in stature. Right. I mean, like, that performance. I mean, I remember you said Spike. Because <laughs> people don't know. Denzel, Mr. Washington, stopped working on other stuff a year before. Right. To prepare for that film. Well, you know, it's a lot of pressure. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, there was a lot of pressure. We had this running joke where we see, we had our passport. We were ready our, to go. As the minister said, a lot of people love the honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> My arms are but for so long, I can't reach but so far. <laughs> he was dead serious, too. But I give you credit just for... The bravery, man. But you know, I did have to go to Chicago, though. You yeah, yeah, I had to sit down. That's I right. had to have a sit down That's right. with the minister. Yeah, that's correct. What is the hardest role? Uh, let's let's to maybe take Malcolm X out of the mm -hmm. equation, but because that wasn't the hardest one. The hardest ones are the ones that you don't want to be there. Well, that's true. <laughs> Malcolm X really wasn't hard because I had done the play. Right. Chickens and, come home the roost. Right? Yeah. So I felt comfortable that I could do it. And, you know, I got the gift of gab anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was cutting and pasting his speeches. You remember right, right. we were shooting one day out there and, and you just kept loading the cameras oh. up. I just kept going. <laughs> I was making it up. You were making it up, Denzel. Because no, I wasn't making it up. I was using pieces. I know, but even that, though, I was a witness to this. You channeled the spirit of Malcolm. Because I remember one specific time where, you know, we went to Malcolm's speeches. And once you finished with the text, you kept on going. Right, right, right. And we, we, we I didn't say cut. <laughs> right, right, right. We kept, kept loading the camera. We kept loading right. the camera. And there were many times in that film where we all had to pinch ourselves because we thought we saw the reincarnation right, right. of Malcolm. It wasn't about impersonation. Right, you know, trying to capture the spirit. The spirit and just trying to... You know, actors, well, I'm going to look like him and that, right, but that's, right. that's just surface stuff. Will Smith called me before he started Ali, and he was saying, what should I do? You know, and he, and he did the voice for me, and he had it. I said, I think you should go to Michigan and pray with Ali. When I did Malcolm X, I would just pray every morning, you know, before I came out of that trailer. I was like, Malcolm, come on, you mm -hmm. know, because it's not for me. Right. You know, it's, it's just it's for him and for those, hopefully, that, 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 that he affected. What attracted you to... Uh the script, Inside Man, and the role of Detective Keith Frazier. Yes. I just, you know, same kind of thing. I was like, whoa, this is a good read. I, I don't know if you remember this. I sent you, he got game. I said, I know Denzel's not going to want to do this. And I loved this. it. I oh, know. I know. I, I sent you on a humbug. He's not going to want to do this. <laughs> you didn't think so? Nah. But that time, I just thought this might be a little bit too dark. All right. Nah. I love those scenes where we, we cut the flashback to the young Jesus. Right, right, right. And right. Uh, looking that back, the coaching stuff, mm -hmm. when you go back to them in the Titans. Right, right, You know, right. you were... Yeah, yeah, that yeah, led yeah. To that. But then, but then that's also, uh, that's real. I mean, for me, it's the, mm -hmm. it goes back to, like, the boys club, just the coaches. Right. And all that You like stuff. coaching, right? I love coaching. That's I what I too. That's what I'd be doing if I wasn't <laughs> acting. For Mo Bet, I want to really combine my love of sports and, and jazz. Mm -hmm. Grew up in the jazz household, and you know, in sports, you always hear about these athletes who get career-ending injuries. Right. And if for an athlete or a musician, those guys had to start at a very young age. And so, what happens when something you devote your whole life to? You can't do again. Right. Oh, that, with the that, busted lip, huh? Right. The busted lip to someone. And you begin the film, you see this kid bleak. It's getting trumpet lessons when he's five, six years old. Right. So this playing his trumpet, this horns his whole life, and then what's gonna happen to him when he can no longer right. can no longer play. That's actually one of the first times where we felt free to ad lib more because we was coming up, we was coming up with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we pasted the girl on the, the mirror. Oh that yeah, was, it was John Carlo. John Carlo. <laughs> Uh, was but wild. look at you, yourself, Wesley, mm -hmm. Bill Nunn, Giancarlo, Tane, Tane, Jeff Tane, Watts, Tane, Tane Watts, Robin, Robin Harris. Harris. Oh, Robin, the great Robin Harris. Oh man, said I had a head like a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Robin Harris is so funny. The actors, even if they weren't working that day, they would come in 
because they know Robin was uh, was going to be performing. What Spike did was just, I guess, between setups or whatever, Robin knew because it was a stage, and he would go up on stage and just go off and so, do a show. You, you oh, man, I walked through there one day. He says, oh, Bleak, where you get that suit from? I said, I got it from your girlfriend. He said, yeah, well, check your drawers. That ain't the only thing you got from her. <laughs> he said it like, you know, I was like, oh, let me get out of here. Question we both yeah. asked all the time. Are we making progress? Are there, mm -hmm. is, it, is it getting better? I think we are making progress, right. but this it's not progress across the board. I want I hope hopefully one day soon, while we're still young, to get in one of those gatekeeping positions so mm -hmm. we can be one of those people that has green light power, that has a studio job. Some of these studios don't even have any black executives at all. You know, we go to the studios, man, the only black people we see is the guy at the gate. Right. Let you in. And he won't let you in. <laughs> you know. At the same time, yourself, Sam, Don Cheadle, mm -hmm. Will, Eddie. Why do you think there aren't the roles for black women? Are we not writing them? Is that on us? I think, I think we have to write them. Yeah. You know? And you got to give Miss Winfrey credit because, you know, right, she right. uses all her clout. She right. just did. Zora Neale Hurston's classic Eyes Watching Gawa right, Halley. Right. Now she's getting ready to do Paradise again. She definitely can get stuff made. Hopefully, you know, she'll put us on the show too when the movie comes out. <laughs> <laughs> not that we're asking for that. Not that we're asking. You're not asking to be on the you, show. You. I still want to ask you what you thought of Do the Right Thing, despite what you thought of Glory. Do the Right Thing. It's a film that has grown on me more and more. It's impressed me more and more. Now I'm really looking at what you do. I'm not just looking at the right, story. Right. Or I'm looking at how you put it together and the sophistication of the shots. And I appreciate it more because now I'm seeing what you're doing. And then I'm going, man, he was like a kid when he did that. Thank you. Uh, all the shots, I mean, I, I can't take the credit for that. You know, that's Ernest Dickerson. Okay. And you know, also, I like to say that Do the Right Thing was really the first film I felt comfortable working with actors. She's going to have it in school days. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. Glory. What take was that on the tear? Another one of those characters, but especially that scene where I just went to prayer. I just called on all the spirits of all those who had been beaten and hung. And I, not, not that I represent them, right. but I literally, you know, and some people might think it's, it's wacky, but that's all I did. I just said, come on with me. I just want to go out here and represent you all in some kind of way. And when I walked out the door to come do the scene, it suddenly hit me like, Oh, don't know everybody, because everybody's getting liberal, and the guy was hitting me. He didn't really want to hit me. It was like a felt whip, but it was wet, so it was starting to hurt. <laughs> so he was, I was like, come on, hit me for real like you, like you mean it, like I stole something from you. It just wasn't anything I planned. Ed, to his credit, he saw it. He was like, wait, ooh, ooh, wait, wait, wait. Now we're going to start pushing in. He started, you know, we did a couple of more takes, but uh, it, it was like he wasn't going to let anybody see him sweat. Mm -hmm. or, or feel the pain, and uh, it's just it's just one of those moments. Like you said before, with Malcolm X, you got to put yourself in a position to be open because stuff like that, you know, our ancestors out there, right? And if you're open, we could use that. You know, I, you got that antenna, it. but you, yeah. we could draw upon. I've our done ancestors. it over and over again. If if there's anything I can say to actors, that's what's worked for me more than anything else more than any technique, more than any amount of training or any amount of luck or anything else you want to call it. How long do you think you'd like to keep acting? You know, I was, I've was i been ready to quit acting. Yeah? Yeah, for a while. The money's too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to walk away, but... <laughs> no, no, I, I just... Uh, would, you, would you just be solely director then? You know who I use as a model? I, I look at Clint Eastwood. That's sort of my model now. I'm like, you know, because there's going to come a time when I ain't the guy. It's right. already happening, you know. So not only that, more than that, I like seeing other people do well. Mm -hmm. I got the most pleasure out of watching Derek Luke and Joy Bryant, mm -hmm. you know, grow and seeing where they before are now. Before your eyes. Yeah, before my eyes and seeing where they are now. Mm -hmm. I like being behind the scenes. I don't, I, I don't need to be the guy out front. Well, there was a there was a little bit of time between he got game and inside man. Let's not be that long next time. Peace. All right, man. All right. Thank you.